Hi, it's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a hot minute. Our hot minutes. And it's been hot. <laughs> All fun and joke aside though, I want to talk to you today about seasons. Yes. Seasons. Seasons in our lives. Seasons on a journey whatever it is seasons some of us i know we're in a phase of our life or a season of our life and we're asking god what next where am i to go what should i do we don't know and this is not strange because even the scriptures tell you that there's a time for everything under the sun there's a time there's a season for everything under the sun there's a time to live and a time to die and if you go to the book of ecclesiastes you get more information on that but sometimes we're in a season and we want to come out we want to come out of this season because we think that it is rough and we know that God has placed something in our hearts and we just want to get there. We want to get to that thing. But a lot of things that I've been reading and watching recently have taught me this, which is somewhat of reiteration of what, I've, what I already know. And it's that sometimes God has us in a season, God has us in a phase. Because he wants to reveal unto us another part of him that we don't know yet. We may hear about it. You may have heard about God being your provider, your Jehovah Jireh. Your God being your Jehovah Shalom, your peace, etc. But you've never really experienced what it means for yourself, for him to be your Jehovah Jireh. For you to not have any resources to do what you need to do. And God shows up and provides for you. For you to be going out of your mind with worry and distress and everything is coming down on you at once. And he shows up and he be your he he be, <laughs> he becomes your Jehovah Shalom, your peace. So sometimes God has to put us in some seasons, some valleys. Some low, low times in our lives. He has to put us there so that we can experience who he really is for us. You know, and to us. Because I know it can be frustrating when you have a vision. God has given you a vision. God has given you a dream. And you're saying to yourself, I'm not seeing where it's been manifested. Why am I the cashier? At this place and God says that I'm supposed to be the owner of my own beauty salon I'm just saying maybe he's teaching you cash management maybe he's teaching you how to deal with customers maybe he's teaching you time management so that when you have your own business you would have already mastered those skills and you'd be successful you probably are dealing with some family members and it's just hard you you just can't gel with them the personalities are clashing but then guess what god told you that you are going to be a school teacher and he wants to teach you how to deal with different personalities so it starts with your family he has you in a season where he's just pruning you where your family is concerned concerned and what we need to remember is that a lot of times when we are going through tri uh, trials and tests and valley experiences and seasons that we just want to come out of it's not about the other person it's about us so it's not about the other person it's not about your job it's not about your school it's not about your church it's about something that's in you that god is trying to fix so that he can move you to the next level to the next season but what I want us to seek to do is to ask God to give us an Issachar anointing. And what I mean by that, that is that I want us to understand the times and the seasons that, season that we're in. We can't do it by ourselves. 
and Issacharias was one of the tribes that was spoken about um, in chron Chronicles. They spoke about Issachar in Chronicles. And that was the sons of Issachar, they were able to understand the times and the seasons so that they would know what God wanted them to do in that time or season. So I pray for us to have that Issachar anointing. Ask for God to just bless, bless us with that. Because what we do when we are in a season can make or break us, I believe. I believe it can make or break us. It can delay what God has for us. But if we know what God is saying to us in a particular time, then we'll know how to act. I'm not saying that we're going to get it right all the time. I'm not saying that we're going to be perfect because guess, guess what? Even though we have God and we're seeking to do the things of God, we contend with our flesh. Now and again, we may slip, mess up, make a wrong turn, make a wrong move. But if we confess it to God, repent, he's able to carry us on until the end. So my wish for us, my desire for us, my prayer for us is that we ask God, what next? What next? Ask for that Issachar anointing. God, what next? What do you want me to do at this time? What do you want me to do in this season? And if it is that you're saying, but God, I've been, I've been asking and you're not answering. I don't know what to do. I heard this being said twice. Twice. By um, a minister and also by T.D. Jakes. If you do not know what to do in a particular situation in a particular season but god gave you a word before do the last thing that god told you to do and then he'll give you the rest i think it's michael todd yes minister michael todd said it some time ago and then then i heard it pastor michael todd and then i heard it from td jakes recently if you're in a season, if you're in a phase of your life and you do not know where else to go, what to do next, but God has spoken to you, and whatever you're doing, it's because of something that God has placed in you, do the last thing that God told you to do. Then he will reveal the next level. Because we know God. He's not going to tell us everything one time because if he does, we are going to mess it up. Because that's how we are. We, we are going to meddle. We are going to say, oh, God promised me that I'm going to have my own business. So I do not want this cashier job anymore. You people can take your job and do whatever you want with it. I don't have to do this. I don't need this. And right there and then you have forfeited whatever God was trying to perfect in you. That would make you successful in your job in your business in your own business right and we do not want to do that if joseph knew that he had to be in the pit before he would be placed in the palace i'm sure he would have done something about it i mean come on he's human he would have he would have tried to avoid not being in that pit think about it but he made it from the pit to the palace because god showed him a vision, a dream that, listen, your brothers are going to bow down to you, etc., etc., etc. In his excitement, he told his brothers, and we know the story. They threw him in the pit, told his father that he was dead, etc. But he was brought to Egypt as a slave, became prime minister, and he's the same one who saved his family during the famine. So if we knew... What we had to go through for God to make what he has placed in us um, come forth. For us to give birth to what he has placed in us. A lot of us would, would have messed with things. We would have messed with things. Because if you knew that you had to go through a heartbreak. You had to go through disappointment. You had to go through lack and loss. And all sorts of things for you to have a ministry that caters to people who are broken hearted, people who are discouraged, you name it. I'm pretty sure you would not have wanted to go through all of that. You wouldn't have wanted to be broken hearted, um, having sleepless nights, crying, 
just for you to have a ministry out of it. Human nature says that no, we would avoid that like the plague. That's why God is God. That's why he is wise. So I also want to tell us, as I'm talking about that, to not despise some of the things that we have to go through. Do not despise some of the hurts that you have to go through. Because guess what? I don't know about anybody else. But for me, if somebody is going to preach to me, I'm not saying that if you haven't been through something, you can't preach to me about it. But if somebody is going to preach to me about unconditional love, and they don't have a testimony to tell me about what it means to have unconditional love towards people who have done you wrong. I'm sorry, that's not going to connect with me. It's not. It's not going to connect with me. But if you have gone through it, you have went gone through the fire, you went through trials, you went through all manner, manner, manner of stuff, and you came out, and you're standing in front of me and telling me, yes, you can do this. And I know I am going through hell. And you went through hell. And you came out and you have this testimony and you have this ministry. Heck, I'm going to believe you. I'm going to believe you. So do not despise what you're going through. There is somebody out there who needs your testimony in order to move on. To the next level perhaps. There's somebody out there who needs to know that you have had to forgive people who have done damage to you, damage to your reputation, people who have trampled upon your love, people who have lied, schemed, robbed you, whatever the case may be, and yet you came out on top. You came out with a story. You came out with a deeper relationship with God. You came out shining. So listen, whatever you're going through, whatever season you're in, it's for a purpose. God wants you to be drawn closer to him. He wants you to see another side of him that you've never seen before. You've heard about it. You might have gotten an, a hint of it. But he wants you to truly experience it. Right? He wants you to come out with a testimony that's going to help somebody else. He wants, to come out, wants you to come out with a ministry that's going to help not only that person, but nations. So my people, my people, my beautiful people, whom I love so much. I must also say thank you so much to all the new subscribers. I hope that... The content is encouraging you because as things are laid on my heart, I give them to you. Sometimes I have things, but I don't get the time to record. But I promise you that I'll try to record as much as I can. So whatever season you are in, know that God is still God. He's still in control and his perfect will will be done in your life once you surrender to him. I can't say it enough. Surrender, surrender, surrender. Say, God, I don't know what you're doing. I don't understand what this season is about, but I surrender it to you. Because if you have brought me in this season, you will take me out. And whatever it is that I'm supposed to learn in this season, God, listen, I'm going to learn it today because I do not want to have this season prolonged for longer than it has to. Right? So my people be blessed, have a thankful and happy rest of your week, and I trust that you will surrender all to God. You can't do it by yourself. You can't do it by yourself. And with that, I just want to pray that Almighty God, your people will listen to your voice, they will hearten to your voice, Lord God, and they will just ask for that Issachar anointing to understand what is happening, the, the season that they're in, even if not fully God. Some, we, we, don't, we can't handle the full picture. You know this. But just to give us a glimpse, God, give us a glimpse so we know what to do, where to go. And if you're silent in the season, help us to do the last thing. 
or continue to do the last thing you told us to do until you're ready to move us to the next level. Because there's somebody, God, who's waiting on our testimony. There's somebody, God, who's waiting to hear that we overcame. Because you said that we, over, we overcome by our testimony, mighty God. So thank you, Jesus. Know that you are doing this thing for us. That you are giving us a heart of surrender. That you are allowing us, Lord God, to leave it all at your feet and not take it up. I thank you that it's done now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. Be blessed again, my people. I wish you all the happiness, all the love, all the greatness, awesomeness that this week has to offer and beyond. So take care. Bye.